uh, this brings me to a work that was done by several people who are here. Kishan Patel, um, uh, Juan Enrique Villaprez Perez, and uh, Avinash Baskaran. Uh, together, we analyzed over 100 open source ventilator projects. Now, you guys may recall, um, it sounds like someone has their, their mic on. Um, you guys may recall back in March and April, the, it, it was identified that there might be a global shortage of ventilators. And at that time, there was kind of a hair on fire urgency to create ventilators um, in the West. Um, so many teams without any organization, and these are some of them, uh, started uh, building open source ventilators to try to address this problem. Now, by May, it had been determined that some changes in the way doctors should treat the uh, COVID-19 disease made the ventilator problem less drastic. It's also the case that Ford, Tesla, Dysla, uh, Dyson, and other firms stepped up and quickly built a large number of ventilators. So right now, as I speak, we've had yesterday the highest number of cases ever reported in the United States and quite, I think, close to the highest number of deaths reported. The pandemic is still with us, but ventilators are not the biggest problem that America faces. It is, it is unlikely that someone in the, in the wealthy nations right now will die because of a lack of a ventilator. You're more likely to die because of a lack of an ICU bed or a nurse. Nonetheless, uh, one thing that I'm very proud of is in this whole humanitarian engineering community, which public invention is one part of, uh, helpful engineering, cosmic, open source medical supplies and engineers without borders, or other parts of this, um, people very quickly just said, well, we'll continue this work or some of this work on behalf of lower resource communities or lower middle income countries. And so some of the energy has gone out of making pandemic ventilators, but many of these teams are continuing. And so I'm very, I'm very proud that everybody has done that. 